Item Number SCP-2632 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-2632 is to be contained in a standard humanoid containment cell on Floor 7 of Site-88. SCP-2632 may not physically interact with any Foundation staff directly, except while being restrained. Description: SCP-2632 is a human individual that possesses unusual longevity and is unable to be harmed by any available means. SCP-2632's aging appears to have arrested completely during its time in Foundation custody. SCP-2632 displays physical characteristics which are consistent with a 68-year-old male. Historical records indicate that SCP-2632 was born in 1810 in the Republic of West Florida. Observational evidence of SCP-2632, these historical records, and claims made by SCP-2632 itself indicate that the event which produced its anomalous effect occurred in 1878. SCP-2632 possesses no further anomalous properties and displays symptoms consistent with a diagnosis of relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. While additional permanent damage to SCP-2632's neurological condition appears to have been prevented by its anomalous properties, SCP-2632's behavior is consistent with an individual possessing a moderate state of neurological decay. SCP-2632 was recovered in 2003 following a botched execution attempt in the U.S. state of Washington. SCP-2632 was convicted in 1994 of the killing of Jonathan Garrett and sentenced to death. SCP-2632 refused to choose an execution method and by Washington state law was to be hanged in January of 2003. Due to SCP-2632's anomalous properties, this penalty was ineffective. Agents embedded in the Washington State Department of Corrections were able to recover SCP-2632 following this attempt. SCP-2632 Interview Log The following interview was the fourth conducted. Date, February 5th, 2003. Interviewer, Dr. William Hoskins, SCP-2632 Project Head. Subject, SCP-2632. Location, Site-88, Section C. Dr. Hoskins was instructed to create a rapport with the subject to induce cooperation. Those portions of the interview have been edited out for brevity. SCP-2632. To be perfectly honest, I was hoping for life in prison. Dr. Hoskins. Why? SCP-2632 pauses for several seconds. I haven't told you how I got this way yet. No? Would you like to? I have something I've been needing to get off my chest for a while. Well, I'm not going anywhere, and neither are you. Let's talk. Every time I told somebody about it, I ended up killing him. SCP-2632 taps on the glass partition, separating him from Dr. Hoskins. Don't think that's going to matter so much anymore, though. You ever been to Crossroads, Wyoming? No, I haven't. Beautiful little town. At least it used to be. Moved out there with my wife and little brother in 1867. And who were they? Uh, Bethany Manfred and Jacob Manfred. <laughs> my brother was a fucking coward. Stayed out of the war. My wife's father and brothers died during Sherman's march. Her mama died a few years back, so she didn't have anywhere to go. And I picked her up. And you went to Crossroads? Yeah. Jacob was going to help me set up an undertaker's business. Greedy son of a bitch had a good idea. We were burying a man every week. And then, I started to get it into my head that we could do something about all the death and destruction. I promise you, it was noble at first. I had an Indian in a saloon, I thought he was just talking crazy, but once I sobered him up, he talked to me about a ritual. He said he couldn't die. And that got me fucking interested. And what happened to the Indian? Well, that's complicated, see? He told me about how he and four of friends and enacted a ritual. Turned out there was one catch. People who had participated could still hurt each other. And it was the only way you could die. Okay, then what happened to the others? Well, he'd gotten paranoid. That was that. Little son of a bitch had killed them. All of them. Right, so then you enacted the ritual as well? After a time. It took me a bit to get all the things together I needed, but the way the shakes was getting worse... I was trying to hurry. And then? Then I made the dumbest mistake I've made in a long, long life. I brought my brother and my wife into the thing. So you all performed the ritual. I did most of the hard work. There were some unsavory bits I, I don't think either of them could have stomached. But when it was over, we all knew our whole world was different. What happened to your brother and wife? She was 24 when we finished. 
I was 68, he was 36. My body barely worked anymore, even if it would never get worse. So, exactly what you think happened is what happened. Did they begin an affair? Right under my goddamn nose. I hadn't told them about the catch, so they didn't know that I could hurt them if I wanted to. And did you? Not at first. But you did eventually. What I did was take some of the children's bones I'd used in the ritual, and I planted them in Jacob's house. Then I paid the sheriff a lot of money to go do his job and search the place. What happened to your brother after that? Sheriff arrested him. Trial was short enough. Sentenced him to hang the next week, and I pretended like I was on his side. Told him I'd give him a bit of morphine so he could fake being dead. And did you? Yeah. I laughed at the hanging. <laughs> I was worried somebody might notice. Could barely keep his head up. He was still sleeping afterwards when I carted him out into the hole in the ground I dug seven feet straight down. And you buried him. I did. And what did your wife do? Oh, she wasn't happy. <laughs> Showed up the grave as I was dumping him in, told me everything. Said when he woke up, they'd be leaving town for good. What did you do? I smashed her in the back of the head with a shovel and I threw her in the hole. You... You buried them both? Yeah. Her dead and him sleeping. And he didn't wake up before I was done. What happened after that? I left town myself. Wasn't nothing tying me down. Were you ever worried that your brother would wake up and dig his way out? Dirt has weight. Uh, he was stuck down there at the bottom for 120 years. 120? You said you moved to Crossroads in 1867? Yeah, see, I've been all over the world, but I always come back to Crossroads every once in a while. Some people might call it guilt, but honestly, I just need to know that the one man who could hurt me is still on the ground. And he isn't. No, he isn't. What do you mean? Well, back in 92, I made another pilgrimage out there. They were building a shopping center over the old graveyard. Big old machines. Went in and dug the whole area up. Did they find your brother? They must have, because he found me. Never fucking saw him. Coward caught me from behind. I ain't never been hurt like that in a long fucking time. And I ran and ran, and I, I still don't know why he let me go. What did you do after that? Well, I went home and... Panicked, I guess. Figured the one sure way to avoid my fate was to sit in prison, so I headed out to Mount Rainer. I killed a camper in paradise and sat next to the body until a hiker found me. Right. Now, if I'd been smart, I'd have picked a state with no death penalty at all, but I fucked that up, too. Are you still worried about him coming for you? Not now. I don't think there's any way he could even know I'm here. Why do you think he wants to come for you? I mean, are you serious? Sure, just... For the record, can you imagine not being able to move, not being able to breathe, not even being able to scream for 120 years? Wouldn't that have driven him insane? Sure. I bet he went insane a few times down there and right back to sane again. There ain't nothing I can say to change his mind. Probably not even angry anymore. He knows what I did and why I did it, and he won't stop until I'm hurt just as bad as he was. All right. Thank you for your time. I imagine we'll have more questions for you tomorrow. Oh, fine by me. Incident Report 2632-63. Following several recorded interviews, Dr. Hoskins began to hold informal interviews with SCP-2632 in order to ascertain the specifics of the ritual which produced its anomalous abilities, and the eventual fate of the individual who first informed him of the ritual itself. These interviews were unsuccessful in their stated goals. On November 12, 2015, following 12 years of successful containment, SCP-2632 killed Dr. Hoskins during an unguarded interview. No future interviews are to take place without a barrier separating SCP-2632 from Foundation staff. Research staff are to be accompanied by security personnel at all times when in the presence of SCP-2632. Dr. Elizabeth Lane, SCP-2632 Project Head. Incident 2632-65. Following the death of Dr. Hoskins, a new project head was selected. Dr. Elizabeth Lane, the current SCP-2632 project head, was scheduled to interview SCP-2632 on December 18th. When she entered the interview chamber, along with Agent Bill Cassidy, SCP-2632 began to suffer from what appeared to be a mental break. 
SCP-2632 was unable to answer any questions coherently and appeared to be unusually preoccupied with Agent Cassidy's presence. In order to facilitate a calming of the subject, Agent Cassidy will no longer be utilized as security for the SCP-2632 project. Dr. Elizabeth Lane, SCP-2632 Project Head. Proposed Containment Revisions Due to SCP-2632's uncooperative nature, mental state, the danger it may pose to Foundation personnel, and the anomalous properties it possesses, it has been determined that the following actions are to be performed on December 20, 2016, by order of the SCP-2632 Project Head. The SCP-2632 Project is to be reclassified as inactive. SCP-2632 will be restrained and placed on a steel platform. Exploiting SCP-2632's damage-resistant properties, a press will move a block of lead, approximately SCP-2632's size, downward until it molds into SCP-2632 shape. This press will keep SCP-2632 immobile until the reactivation of the SCP-2632 project. SCP-2632's current project members will be assigned to active projects, and SCP-2632's containment procedures are to be updated with these changes. Dr. Elizabeth Lane, SCP-2632 Project Head. Ethics Committee Note The above proposed changes are tentatively approved. Dr. Lane, I would like to speak to you in the next few days. I have some concerns with regards to your utilizing Agent Cassidy's containment expertise in this matter. Please come see me at your earliest convenience. Dr. Sumerian, Site-88 Ethics Committee Liaison, EC-2632 Task Report. On June 8, 2016, the Ethics Committee approved a proposal related to SCP-2632 by Dr. Sumerian. The task was completed on August 24, 2016. The results of that project are listed below. A search was made to determine the veracity of the SCP-2632 statements regarding its relatives. The burial site SCP-2632 described was found, and the body inside was exhumed. The remains were buried under approximately half a meter of soil, though it was clearly apparent that at least one previous occupant had either been removed or extricated itself from the burial site. The following is a facial reconstruction of the recovered remains. Genetic identification indicates that this individual is strongly related to SCP-2632's still-living descendants. Due to the sex of the individual in question, it is believed to be the remains of Jacob Manfred. The current whereabouts of Bethany Manfred are still unknown.